16. Hebrews chapter 11, from verses 13 to 16. I'm reading from the New King James Version. It's Bible study, so please open your Bibles wherever you are and read with me. Look at the wordings. The faith comes by hearing, and faith comes by listening, and he looking, studying diligently the words of the Lord. Verse 13, 3, 2, 1, read. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now, they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Hallelujah. God he will call you your his home in Jesus' name. He will say you are his daughter. He will say you are his son. And then you will say, God, you are my God indeed, in whom I trust, and none of us shall be ashamed in Jesus' name. Amen. This all died in faith, not having received the promises. But having seen them afar off, were assured of them. They embraced them. They confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Hallelujah. Perseverance of faith. Basically, what that is saying is even when the things you are promised by God has not come to fruition or materialization, you are holding tenaciously to his promises, to his word, that you will not give up until God does it. And even if God is not going to do it in your time, this thing, I believe, must come to reality at the appointed time. And so it is in Jesus' name. So, we are going to look into details of this Four verses, 13, 14, 15, 16. How perseverance of faith featured and why we should persevere in our holding on to God. We told in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1 that we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard. If you back up to Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1, it says, therefore, we must give the more Earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. There's a possibility of drifting away. Drifting away from holding on to the word of God. Drifting away from trusting God. Drifting away when challenges and difficulties surface and it appears they are mounting too much. But the word of the Lord said we shouldn't drift away. Why? Because those who drift away from God received that just recompense or consequence of drifting away. I pray we shall not drift away from the almighty God in Jesus' name. But we hold firm to the promise of the Lord. We hold firm to his words. And he will fulfill his words, his works, his purpose in our lives through us and for us in Jesus' name. Because it says in that Hebrews 2 verse 2 there, the word spoken by the angels proves steadfast. And every transgression and disobedience received a just reward. So everyone, when the angel gave a promise or gave a word that is from the Lord, anyone who disobeyed it or said, well, it's not really necessary, they received a consequence of disobedience or of not really holding on to the promise of God. Did you remember her? 
Lot's wife. The angel said, escape for your life. Escape. Escape to the mountains. Do not look back. Go on, keeping on focusing because we have been sent to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Get going. They were going. One step and the other. One step and the other. And as they were moving and going, Lot going, the wife going, the daughters going, all of a sudden, the wife looked back. And then, she was gone. Can you imagine it? what was going on in the heart of the husband? That is a retest of faith for couples. What was going on in his mind? Eh? Because the footstep of the wife is no longer there being heard as they were going. But the instruction had been, the angel said, do not look back. May we not look back in Jesus' name. May we hold firm to God, following to the end. My brothers, my sisters, don't look back. When the enemy try to bring you back, don't not go back there. When the bridges you have born in the past, the enemy is saying to you, make it again, do not build the bridges again. The whole friends of sinful associations you had in the past, when they are beckoning to you again, say, come on, come over here. Life is sweet over here. Please, my dear brother, please, my dear sister, do not go back to them. Follow on unto God because God is dependable, reliable, unchangeable, and his promises will be fulfilled in your life if you not give up in Jesus' name. So, all this received, died in faith having not received the promises. Those who disobey receive a compense of just reward. Back to the outline. So we ought to give more honest heed to the things we have heard. More especially, we need to pay attention to what the Holy Spirit is teaching us today from Hebrews 11 verses 13 to 16. Preachers, sometimes some teachers misinterpret this passage because it says in verse 13 there, Hebrews 11 verse 13, it says, These all died in faith, not having received the promises. He said, well, they didn't receive any promise. They didn't receive the promises. So why should I continue on hold on to go on to in faith? But you see, as Alfred said, it's important to always read the Bible in context and understand it who and what it is saying. So by the grace of God, we understand that these people he mentioned, if you back up verse eight, verse eight, chapter eight, um, verses 8, you'll see 9 to 12. And even before then, you see talking about Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. There are particular promises that God gave, which in a lifetime of those people didn't come to reality. But eventually, it came to reality. Now we can see. Even then, when they did not see, receive those other promises, they had firm and facts to God. Knowing fully well that God has spoken, I believe it, that settles it. Hallelujah. That's what somebody says. Eh? God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Amen. Anything else? Let them say, my God will not fail. So, this chapter uses the word receive a number of times. And I want you to begin to look at it. In verse 11, it says, By faith, Sarah asserted, received strength to conceive seed. Hallelujah. And she bore a child. When she was past the age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Hallelujah. Sarah received. Verse 13. They died in faith not having received the promises. They confessed they were strangers and prisoners on the earth. But they saw those promises. I was assured of them. They embrace them 
and they knew it to become a reality. And verse number 17, Hebrews 13, 11, 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. He received the promises that, hey, in Isaac shall all humanity be blessed. Yeah. And God said, Isaac, go offer him. But he trusted God. As a launch out, God gave him a substitute for Isaac. May we step out in faith, walk with God by faith, and enjoy the benefits of our perseverance of faith in Jesus' name. Verse 35. Women receive their dead raised to life again. Hey, remember? The woman of Sarevat received her dead son back to life again. They, they head on to God. Remember, he said, she said, no, I'm not going to go. Elijah, Elijah, unless you go with me. They received God's promise of a child to be raised back to life. So, Women received their dead race to life again. And not this all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. That's verse 39 now. Verse 39 said, And all this, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. This one, the promise. Verse 40, God, having provided something better for us that they should not be made perfect apart from us see many of them were waiting and watching towards the fulfillment of jesus christ coming to become the perfect substitute for the redemption of mankind from sins none of them saw it in their lifetime he here we are today hallelujah we can see it it is done and we are a blessing and to many generations in jesus name as a result of christ jesus being born but abraham god promised him he said in you through you shall all who the nations of the earth shall be blessed. And that is why today, you and I, who far, far away from the Israeli as a nation, as a tribe, are called God's children. Praise the Lord. Hey, God will help you and I in Jesus' name. The faith of Bible believers was and is incorruptible and could not be conquered by adverse circumstances. So do not let any adverse situation conquer your faith. Oh yes, sometimes you may want to feel, hmm, is it worth it? Hmm, but please hold firm to God. My God and I, my Lord and I, as a strong writer says, he said, we walk and talk together. My Lord and I, we walk and talk together. We live and move together. My Lord and I. In the world, when we go through the valley of the shadow of death, God, my Father, is with me. You hold on to him. Bible faith of believers can never quench. The eye of their hearts saw clearly the blessings which God had promised. And they were persuaded that those promises will become theirs in due season. That is, at the appointed time, no wonder Habakkuk said, he said, <laughs> wait for it. The promise is for a time. Wait for it. If it tarry, hold on to it. It will never, never be quenched. It will come to reality. Hallelujah. That's why he said, although the fig tree may not blossom, although the olives may not yield anything, or all of it, but I know, I know, I will trust in the Lord my God, and I will give him the praise. Give God the praise in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hey, the Holy Spirit, please inspire us with that level, a measure of faith in God at all times in Jesus' name. The scriptures commend the perseverance of the faith of the Old Testament believers. 
in spite of all the barrage of problems, temptations, and trials around them, they persisted in clinging to God and his word. They lived by faith and died in faith. Lived by faith, died in faith. Let's look at some of the examples. Number one, constancy of faith. Number two, the commitment of faith. And number three, the catalog of the benefits through having faith, unswavering faith in God. Constancy of faith. You may just have to quickly root through some of it. Hebrews 11, 13, 14, we have read that. It says, those people say plainly that they are seeking a country, a homeland that is better than where they left. You know, when God called Abraham, Abraham said, God said, Abraham, come out of the land of Chaldeus and all. Up to a land that we show you, come out. And then he went. In fact, we're told, not even knowing where he was going. But God said, just follow me. Sometimes, look at us today. A step we took some years ago, we can see the result of today. Because God is faithful. Amen. God is faithful. Constancy of faith. In Genesis 25, 5 and 8, <laughs> let's look at Isaac. Died in good old age. Because in Hebrews 11, 13 says, this all died in faith. Not having received the promises and especially this promise of Christ being born to the world. Genesis 25, verse 5 and 8 is Bible study, so we'll quickly go through some of it. Look at the life of Isaac, I mean Abraham rather. In Genesis 25, verse 7 and 8, this is a psalm. If you read from verse 5, 5 says, Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac. Then verse 7. This is the sum of the years of Abraham's life, which he lived, 175 years. Then Abraham breathed his last and died in a good old age. An old man and full of years was gathered to his people. You will not die young below the year God has assigned for you in Jesus' name. You will live full of years, full of age in Jesus' name. Good old age. That means vitality and strength even in old age. Hallelujah. But Jacob, Genesis 48, in verse number 21. Genesis 48, verse 21. And Jacob died. In verse 21. He said to Jacob, Israel said to jo Joseph, that Jacob is Israel. He said to jo Joseph, Behold, he's dying. But, but, this is the constancy of this, you know, declaration of faith. But, God will be with you. God will bring you back to the land of your fathers. Hallelujah. That's faith speaking. And then in verse 28 of chapter 49. Then all these are the tribes of Israel. And he blessed them and he blessed each one according to their own blessing. Then in verse 30, 30 29, he charged them and said to them, He's to be gathered to his people. To bury him in the fathers with his fathers in the cave that is the feet of Ephraim the Hittite. In the cave, and he went on and went on. And then in verse number 31, there they bury Abraham, there they bury Sarah, there they bury Isaac, there they bury Rebekah, there he bury Leah. And said, he said, Jacob said, you bury him there too. Died in faith. Look at chapter 50. Concerning Joseph, verse 24. And then we see what this constant of faith actually meant. Look at what Joseph said. 50, 24. And Joseph said to his brothers, He's dying, but God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land to the land 
of which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Then Joseph took a note from the children of Israel. You, I said, God will surely visit you. And you shall carry up my bones from here. That became a reality. You look at the book of Joshua. When eventually they marched to the promised land, they, they left Egypt and they crossed. They carried the bones of Joseph and buried in the land that God promised to his forefathers, Abraham. Constancy of faith, even at the point of dying, he said, I'm not giving up. I'm going to make that God. That's, we see many more. Job is there. Job 19, 25 to 27. Job said, I know my Redeemer lives. I know my Redeemer lives. Even when everything around him was, around him, was, around him was gone and his own physical body was aching in different, different pains and trouble. Look at what he said. Let's read it. It's Bible study, Job 19, verse 25 to 27. And it says, I know. For I know that my Redeemer lives. Does your Redeemer lives? Jesus, your Redeemer, my Redeemer, is he alive? Is he alive? Yes, he's alive. My Savior is alive. That songwriter says, Alive, alive, my Savior is alive. Alive forevermore. The sting of death is gone. And now in him I have eternal life. Since Jesus is alive. Sing hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. My Savior is alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. My Savior is alive. Is your Savior alive? My brothers, my sisters, your Savior Jesus is here alive. He's alive. He's risen. He lives forevermore. He's right there with you. He's right there with me. He is anointing you. He's anointing me to do His will. And we shall do His will faithfully in the name of Jesus. Amen. Job said, my Redeemer lives. And he shall stand at last on the earth. And he says, and after... My skin is destroyed. This I know that in my flesh I shall see God. <laughs> Whom I shall see for myself. And my eyes shall behold and not another. How oh, my heart yearns within me. Praise the Lord. Hey, that is talking about resurrection. Job knew about it. And he was persuaded to the end. May God give us that constancy of faith in Jesus' name. Don't let anybody try to persuade you or discourage you and say, well, you never know what that, if, not, if it's not there. Come on. Jesus is there. And he lives forevermore to fulfill what he has promised you and I in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. First King chapter 8 verse 56. He says, there has not been any words of the Lord that he promised. None of it has failed. Hey, let's read that. And I believe it will encourage you. First Kings 8 verse 56. This was when Solomon was praying. And he told the people. He said, look at this. Blessed be the God. The Lord God. First Kings 8 56. Blessed be the Lord God who had given rest to his people Israel. According to all that he promised, there has not failed one word of all his good promise which he promised through his servant Moses. Can you remember Joshua himself said it? Joshua, in Joshua chapter 21, it's not only Solomon that said later, Joshua had said it before when they got to the promised land. The book of Joshua chapter 21, 
in verse 45, it says, in verse 3 from verse 44, the Lord gave them rest all around. May God give you rest all around in Jesus' name. May he give you peace all around in Jesus' name. In spite of all the challenges and the tribulation and the trials you've been through, God will give you his peace in Jesus' name. The Lord gave them rest all around according to all that they had sworn to their fathers. Not a man of all their enemies stood against them. Hey, the Lord deliver all their enemies into their hand. Not a word fail of any good thing which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel. All came to pass. Hallelujah. All came to pass. Praise the Lord. Make the promises of God concerning you come to pass to fulfillment in the name of Jesus. Ah, today I speak by the word of the Lord. Let not any word that God has promised you, none of it will fail in the name of Jesus. And I pray it shall not be delayed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In 23 verse 15. Joshua repeated it again. Therefore, Joshua 23, 15. It shall come to pass that as all the good things which have come upon you, which the Lord your God promised you, so the Lord will bring upon you all empty things until he has destroyed you from the good land with the Lord. So he was telling them that, look, if you disobey, this is so, I, I always like to be balanced. Because if people do not balance, they discover the air in one side. They don't my God has said it. He will do it. He will do it. And then they go to sin. I say, you know, no, 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 no. That's what Joshua was saying. Look, he said, if, you, if they fail, then the word God has promised also of judgment will come to them. But I pray we will not disobey God in Jesus' name. Now, quickly, we read this in the heart outline. This all died in faith, not having received the promises. Each one of them, Old Testament characters, died in faith. Firm promise, expecting Messiah to come. They were believing, they were beholding the heavenly glory afar off. Their eye of faith was strong. Hallelujah. How strong is your faith? I know, you know, during the testing time, you can really be shaken. That's natural and normal. But please, even when you are shaken, do not be uprooted in Jesus' name. Keep standing. Hallelujah. Yes, though I'm shaking, but I'm not going to fall. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you see, the eye of faith was strong. They were endowed with long distance spiritual vision. With the telescopic eye of faith, they saw them afar off. They were fully persuaded. It was said, in fact, we said they embraced it. Can you imagine? Embrace what you cannot physically see? Ah, that is faith, man. Because you only embrace what you can hold. But to embrace the promise of God, that you have gone to the point that I said, look, God cannot fail. I'm holding on to him. Hallelujah. Faith sees the invisible clearly, brings strong persuasion in the heart, and makes us to embrace God's promises. This or died in faith. To die in faith means to have an assumed confidence in God, feel and at the point of death. They had a, it was like those three Hebrew children in the book of Daniel, chapter number three. They said, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not afraid. We are not hesitant to give you an answer regarding this. We are not going to bow to your idol. We will not bow. You have threatened us that you put us in fire. So it be it. We are not bowing down to your idol. Nebuchadnezzar, our God whom we serve, we deliver us. But even if we will not deliver us, we will not bow to your idol. Hey, that infuriated the Cardinesa. And they said, come on, make it hotter. Pull the people there with anger. And the soldiers that put them in were burnt. 
The people they put in the fire were not born. Hey, God. God, please help us. Help us to have faith in you. And not giving up to the threats of the enemy in Jesus' name. That is it. Even at the point of death, they said, we standing with firm in faith. They had a firm belief in the reality and existence of life and fellowship with God after death. They entrusted their departing souls into the care of a loving and faithful God. They had strong faith believing in the final blessed rest in the heavenly country prepared for them by God. Hallelujah. Hey, hey. You see, their chief aim and supreme desire was to lay aside all hindrances, live like strangers and pilgrims on the earth. You see, I have another home. This is a temporary sojourning place. Live every day with that consciousness. That's a better place. But thank God we'll enjoy this place and go and enjoy that place as well. In the name of Jesus. Good old age, full of life and vitality by the grace of the almighty God. None of our lives will be cut short in Jesus' name. So as we live like strangers and pilgrims on the earth, we must focus our affection on things above. Not to allow anything of temporary thing to make us to lose faith. Do you have such faith that sees the promises afar off? Do you have such faith that is fully persuaded? Firmly embracing these promises. Are God's promises really precious to us? Do our hearts cling to them with love and delight? Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Psalm 34 says. Do we plead those promises before the throne of grace? Does our daily walk show that we are strangers and pilgrims on the earth? And that we are. Partakers of the heavenly calling. The Lord will help you and I in Jesus' name. Commitment of faith. Quickly. We have seen the constancy of faith. They did not give up. Then the commitment of faith. Hebrews 11 in verse number 15, verses number 15 and 16. It says, and truly, truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now, they desire a better. That is, a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he has prepared a city for them. Hallelujah. Hey, I pray God will be both confidence about me and about you in Jesus' name. That was what God said concerning Job. He said, Job, to, this, to Satan, you see my servant Job? You cannot get him to deny me. Commitment of faith. Genesis 24. I want to look at this quickly because of time. Look at how Abraham, when he was Sending his servant to go and look for a wife for his son Isaac. Because Abraham remember what God had told him. You have moving you out from there, just as we have been moved out of the camp of the sinners and the wicked. We have been moved to the camp of God. Do not go back to the camp of the wicked. Don't go back to them. Don't go back to the camp of smokers and drunkards, party goers and the, you know, clubbing. No. Stay with God's people. Don't go back to the camp of idol worshippers, bowing down to idols. No. We're not going back. We're staying with God. Genesis 24 in verse 6 and 8. But Abraham said to him, Beware. That you do not take my son back there. Because the man was saying, what if I get there and the woman is not willing to come with me to come and marry your son? Should I take your son from here and go get, her, get him to marry her over there? Hey, hey. 
Abraham said, no, no. Do not take my son back. And he now spoke in faith. Look at verse 7. The Lord God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from the land of my family, and who spoke to me and swore to me, saying to your descendant, I give this land. He will send his angel before you, and you shall take a wife for my son from there. Verse 8. This is another way of knowing that he was hooked on God. And if, if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you'll be released from this oath. Only do not take my son back there. You're going to look for a husband? Don't go back to the Egypt of sin. You're looking for a wife? Don't go back to the place of Egypt of sin. Stay with God. Eh, how do I know? Eh, come on. If truly you know you are born again, you have God, he will tell you. You will know. You will know. Yeah, which one is greater? To be born again or to be married? To be born again is greater. And if you have become born again, come on. God will guide you aright, connect you aright at the right time to the right person. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, it shall be fulfilled and materialized in this time in Jesus' name. You know, sometimes some people begin to say, hey, you know, until I go from one party to another party, <laughs> one uh, wedding to another wedding, one, uh, I guess I'm going to be looking around. In fact, some people go from church to church looking for a husband or looking for a wife. No. Yes, you must pray. Yes, you must listen to God. God will guide because in our heart is focused on him. So that's what, what Abraham was telling. You know, commitment of it. Don't let my son go back to that place. Job 17 verse 9, he says, The righteous shall hold on to his ways, and he that has a clean hand shall be stronger and stronger. Hallelujah. Psalm 112 verse 7, He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. He's not afraid of danger. He's not afraid of, hey, the years are passing on from you. You become, well, oh, that. His heart, our heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 24 verse 21 says, Do not associate with faithless people. People that are always given to, you know, like chameleons. They change like anything. He says, my, my son, my daughters, don't associate with such people. Okay? Okay? Today, eh, eh, this one is over here. Eh, I think it's, it's true. Eh, tomorrow, I think... Ah, uh -uh. come on. God's word is sure. Don't sleep around in the sense of, I want to try her first before I marry her. Then I, no, come on. Hey, God deliver us from evil in Jesus' name. Hey, hold on to faith. The word of God says in the book of Psalm 24, verse, Psalm 27, verse 4, it said, I dwell. One thing have I desire. This thing I will seek after. What is it? That I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Psalm 27 verse 4. Read with me. One thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord. How long? All the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. I pray that's what we will do continually in Jesus' name. Beholding the beauty of the Lord in the house of the Lord in Jesus' name. The patriarchs remain in the land where God placed them because they surrender to the total control of God. If they had desired to return to their idolatrous land from which they were called, the opportunities were many. Instead of going back, they persevered in the path which God appointed for them. Despite all discouragement, trials, 
and difficulties, they committed themselves to following that course marked out for them by God. Abraham's conviction, Abraham's commitment was so firm that he would neither go back to his native land nor allow Isaac, his son, to go there to take a wife. We too should manifest such commitment of faith. Though enticement abound on every land, tempting us to go back to the world and its vanities, we must keep on looking unto Jesus, fixing our hearts on heaven and his glory. The heavenly country was ever on the heart of Abraham. One, he looked for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Two, they confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Three, they seeking a country. They sought for a country and looking for her to that country. That four, they desired a better country. That is an heavenly one. And five, they declare plainly that they seek such a country. Are we so desirous of that better country, the heavenly country? If so, then the earthly things will not hold our hearts captives in Jesus' name. In closing, the catalog of the benefits that we can have through faith. Remember the title of the Bible study? The perseverance of faith. We've looked at the constancy of faith. We've looked at the commitment of faith. Now, the catalog of benefits. How many can we count? Many. But let's do a little bit and then we can pray. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Look at Psalm 103, verses 1 to 5. That's a popular psalm we usually use to pray and to praise God. It says, bless the Lord. Thank the Lord. Worship the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me. Another translation says, and all that I am, worship the Lord. And do not forget his promises. Hallelujah. What are all his benefits? Number one, forgives our iniquities. Who can forgive iniquity? Who can forgive sin apart from God? Oh, yeah, people may pardon here and there, but the sin that truly destroys and put people in hell, nobody can forgive it apart from God himself. And that we have received that forgiveness. Praise the Lord. He forgives iniquities. Number two, he heals all your diseases. Diseases that we see and we don't see, we they know of or we don't know of. The Lord God, your healer, we heal you of all them all in Jesus' name. Benefit of faith. Catalog of faith in, faith in God. Put in faith in God. Forgives all the iniquities. Heals all your diseases. Redeems your life from destruction. How many times the enemy have attempted against your life, against my life, but God deliver us from them all. He will continue to deliver you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, look at what Paul said in the book of 2 Corinthians. He says in chapter 1, God, we trust in him. He deliver us. He is delivering. And we are confident he will still deliver. Hallelujah. God delivers in verse number 2 Corinthians chapter 1 in verse number 10 in fact if we back on to verse 9 it says yes we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God, who raises the dead. Verse 10. Who delivered us from so great a death. Past tense. 
and thus delivers us present tense in who we trust that he will still deliver us. Praise the Lord. Hey, so when David said he delivers us from destruction, he will deliver you from destruction today and he will deliver you from destruction that the enemy may bring against your way in the future in the name of Jesus. Because your faith is in God, my faith is in God. We're holding on to him. We're holding on to him. We're holding on to him. Say, oh God, my father, rescue my soul. Like David will cry. Rescue my soul from the hand of the wicked people. And do not give me all to the wish and the will of my enemies. The Lord God will not give you over to the will of your enemies in Jesus' name. Benefits through faith. That's Psalm 103, it says in verse 5, verse 4, verse 4, we've read, it redeems your life from destruction. We crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. And verse 5, satisfy your mouth with good things. Hallelujah. I pray in your mouth, my mouth will continually be satisfied with the goodness of the Lord in Jesus' name. Good, good things, good, good things. Hallelujah. As our women always say, say women team. Fine, fine things. Good, good things. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Our women are blessed and I live it. We too are blessed in Jesus' name. Hey, It's good to trust in Christ. Lord, help us to the end in Jesus' name. The Hebrew chapter, just of time, let's just close with this. Reading from the outline. The Hebrews chapter, this is Hebrew chapter 11, reveals that the Old Testament believers received the fulfillment of many promises. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Joshua, many others received the promises. Also, many individuals in Israel received many blessings by faith. There are those that received deliverance or salvation. Like David will say, grant unto me the joy of my salvation. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. So they received healing. Exodus 15, 26. I'm the Lord that healed you. Not put on you the disease of the Egyptians. I'm the one who heals you. By the blood of Jesus, every disease that has been on the hand, on the life of unbelievers, may the Lord God not allow the devil to put them on your body. In the name of Jesus! Deliverance. Setting apart for God. Sanctification. Protection. Hallelujah. Preservation. Many, many answers to prayers. Amen. Praise the Lord. He answers. Hey, you know, I read to you, I told you about Daniel. I mean, to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Three Hebrew children. Protection and preservation. Many, many answers to prayers. Yet, these all died in faith not having received the promises. What promises were they not able to receive? Listen to this. Israel became a great nation after Abraham's death. So it wasn't done in the life of Abraham, lifetime of Abraham, that Israel became a great nation. But he held on to God. And what God has said, it will be fulfilled. Hallelujah. What about this? God's promise that all the families of the earth will be blessed through Abraham was only fulfilled through the coming of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It was only fulfilled when Jesus Christ came. That's why later on you see in, Gen in, G in Galatians chapter number 3, he says that we will become heirs of God through Abraham. Hallelujah. Prophecies concerning the Messiah and the future fullness of the Holy Spirit 
were later fulfilled, but not in the lifetime of the Old Testament saints. God is faithful. That's what he was saying in that Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13, that they all died in faith, not having received the promises. All these promises of the Holy Spirit being baptized, baptizing us, and dwelling within us. You know, Joel says, shall come to pass in the last day upon my spirit, upon all flesh. He believed God. He didn't see it manifested. But he done the wonderful day of Pentecost became a reality. May God help us to hold firm to his promise to the end in the name of Jesus. Perseverance of faith. Will you persevere in holding on to God? That's the question to you today. Will I persevere holding on to God? Even in the land that we live in, that sometimes this Christian faith is being squeezed or marginalized, we will still stand. That's why Jesus has the question, when it comes, will he still find faith on earth? Will he find you and me faithfully watching, holding on? May you find us faithful to the end in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and we'll pray and ask him to help us. We shall not give up. We shall not give up. Holy Spirit, help us. Jesus, help us. Our confidence is in you. Our trust is in you. We're looking up to you, Lord. We're looking up to you, Lord. Holy Spirit, help us. Jesus, help us. Help me to persevere, holding on to your promises. And where, Lord God, I do not have the clarity of confirmation, please open my eyes to see in the story, spirit realm to see what you promise. Open my heart to understand and perceive, oh God, these promises of yours. They are yes, the word of God says, and amen in Christ Jesus. Father, Lord, help us. That through the challenges, through the challenges, through the difficulties, or through the temptations, we will stand firm, holding firm, and you will lead us through. We will not sink, oh God. We will not sink in the muddy of life's temptation. In the name of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit will make you to stand firm. Never give up. Grace of God, you are sufficient. We receive this grace today, Lord. We receive grace today. I pray for those who are already failing and falling. Please, Father, lift them up, Holy Spirit. Oh, Jesus, lift them up, Holy Spirit, as your word promised. He says, the righteous may fall seven times, but they shall rise again. Oh, my Father, has there been anyone that has fallen through temptation or through anything that the devil has used against their lives? And they're saying, how can I rise up again? Oh God, my Father, by the authority of your word and the anointing of your word, may they be raised up today with the grace of God and stand firm in Jesus' name. And oh God, my Father, those that are on the verge of making decisions and saying, well, ah, this is hard. Holy Spirit, the grace to enable them to know it is not burdensome. Your word says the commandments of yours are not grievous. I pray, whisper that voice to them this moment and impart into their spirit the strength to stand firm and not quit in the way of the Lord in Jesus' name. Because you are faithful. You are promised, you are faithful to uphold our promises. And Lord, we will rejoice with them. We will celebrate with them. Because truly, <laughs> you are the God who has never failed. We praise you, Father. We will celebrate our God. We will celebrate our God. Ah, glory and honor, we bring on to you. Receive our praises, O oh God. Yes, we will celebrate with them in the name of Jesus. We celebrate with them. Celebrate, O oh God, the victory that you have given by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I pray 
open the door for those whose enemies have shut the doors of progress to them. The doors be open now in Jesus' name. For those who are sick and tired, Holy Spirit, I proclaim healing to their spirit, so manifest in the body now in Jesus' name. For you are the Lord who heals all our diseases. I proclaim healing from the top of the throne of God. Come to you now where you are and be lifted up supernaturally in the name of Jesus. For God, you made the body in the beginning perfectly whole. I speak wholeness to your bodies now in Jesus' name. And the glory of the Lord continue to manifest in your life, through your life, and within your household forever in Jesus' name. And Father, thank you. I pray by your grace, I also will hold firm to your word. By faith, constancy, and growing stronger day by day, and you walk in your wonderful works of one miracles through us, and we shall not pack way, halfway, in the name of Jesus. We'll make it at last to see you in heaven. Receive our rewards in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless all of you. Thank you. Sorry we started late. And that's why we call us. I think it took about five more minutes extra. The Lord be with you all in Jesus' name. Tomorrow, I believe we have evangelism or some work in the church. We'll pop in. It will be built on our WhatsApp page. What we shall do by the grace of God. Oh, there's no Sunday school tomorrow. And on Sunday, by the grace of God, we're going to have our Sunday service at 10 in the morning. Tomorrow, 11 a.m., the Lord be with us as we go in Jesus' name. Let's share the grace together, please. One, two, go. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy following us all the days of our lives. And we are dwelling in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. And bless someone now, please. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. God make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you all and give you his peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless yourself. The Lord bless me. The Lord keep me. The Lord make his face to shine upon me and be gracious unto me. The Lord lift up his countenance upon me and give me peace in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen.